are we now really back on track with CMU, which is so important for Europe? Well, absolutely. Good morning to you. Uh, we are very much back on track. And in my view, we never went off track because having a, um, a capital markets union is essential for the European Union. And of course, we have capital markets. They're national and there are barriers uh, between those national markets. And we're trying to remove some of those barriers. Um, and it is important. I mean, it is disappointing your previous reports about this potential virus um, mutation, which is alarming. But we know that we need capital for the recovery post COVID. We also know that in in this green and digital transition, all companies need to invest and they need capital to invest. And what we're doing is trying to unblock those barriers to allow for the free movement of capital and to give accessibility and visibility to companies. And we're also including SMEs in this conversation because we know that SMEs rely heavily on banks. We want to have a, di a diversification, if you like, so that they can look to capital markets. So the package yesterday, which we announced, is part of that process, but it's not the end. And I think you will understand that you don't build a capital market overnight. You build it over time, step by step. Uh, it is difficult sometimes to remove barriers. So some of the things we're doing next year is to look at insolvency uh, laws across the union and see can we harmonise those because that can also be a barrier and taxation and other issues. But that's for the future. What we're doing in this package is, if you like, putting um, a real impetus into capital markets union. We're talking about setting up a very unique unique European single access point information about companies, large and small. Uh, those who report, of course, will uh, report on financial information. That's clear. But more importantly, in this transition, we want them to report on sustainability information. And for smaller companies, they will have the option of being part of that. Commissioner, I think, we'll, I think we're on the same page, actually. I'm saying it went off rack. You're, you're, you're saying it took too long and perhaps the impetus wasn't there, but now it's back again. Uh, but that's good news. But how do we get, and this is at the nub of the issue as far as I'm concerned, there is a pool of savings and investments in Europe which is absolutely gigantic. How do we get that efficiently and quickly to the companies where it is needed, to the capital and growth? Because I've spoken to so many of your peers and people like Bruno Le Maire, and, and one thing that uh, Minister Le Maire made to me, and I think it's a really great point, is that we failed to get the money to those growth companies quickly enough. We failed to do that in France and an EC level as well. Is this the final part of that jigsaw, uh, Commissioner? Well, actually, the final part, if there is a final part, is to engage people in the capital markets union. And I think that's perhaps been something we haven't done. So things like uh, financial literacy, which is a key part of my work, is to encourage people to think about their money because they work for their money, but their money isn't working for them. And you are so right. There are, you know, deposits have accumulated through COVID because those who were working weren't spending. But this money is lying idle. It is an untapped resource. So next year, in terms of a retail investment strategy, we will be targeting uh, those funds to say to people, look, you, you have money, but it's not working for you. Invest, invest in small or large companies. But in order to do that, I think we have to have citizens who understand how capital markets work and who are comfortable and understand risk and opportunity. But I absolutely agree with you. It has been quite staggering that we have had this enormous build-up of deposits, and yet we have companies that are starved of cash. So there isn't a match here, but there could very well be. And all of the work we're doing around financial literacy, which I think is huge globally because many people don't have the skills or the confidence to check in on this area. So it, it, it means that they don't benefit from a potential investment opportunity. Uh, so there are things we will be doing next year and we have already done to look, for example, on long term investment funds, where at the moment they are restricted for retail investors. They have to put in 10,000. But we're, we're removing some of those, if you like, barriers for those who would like to invest in these. And when we're talking about long term, of course, this green and digital transition, it is a long term investment in some areas like energy or transport. So, yes, this is a moment where we do need to step up our game. But in, in doing so, we just don't talk to those who are big in the system, who understand it. We need to talk to people, citizens across the member states. Uh, we need them to understand that the work we're doing around information about companies, they will have access to that. So if they're making decisions, they can look at who and where they would like 
like to invest their money. Uh, and therefore, an understanding of how the system works is absolutely vital. But this does take time, and I think you are right. There is an urgency about what we're doing now, um, not only because of Brexit, which you referenced. Of course, when, when the UK was part of the European Union, London was our, our, you know, our financial centre. That's not the case today. But I think the pressure comes from knowing that there is capital that has not been utilised. There is huge need amongst uh, SMEs, corporates, for investment. And it's also fair to say that we have made progress. We are seeing developments on the Capital Markets Union which are right. positive. But we need much more to right. happen.